Hello everyone and welcome to another video from the Robin Nets podcast. This is not a typical podcast video. This is just a roundup of all the spring knitting patterns that I have been looking at for the last month or so. Um, so if this is something that you are interested in, if this is something you've been doing as well and you would like some ideas and you are uh, looking for it, grab something warm to drink, get cozy, get your knitting and I hope you enjoy this episode with me. All right, when it comes to spring, what am I thinking of? I'm thinking of layering. I'm thinking of fingering weight sweaters. I'm thinking of flowers and gardens. And so the color palette I'm again thinking of would be more greens and oranges, yellows, reds perhaps. Um, and um, I'm looking at maybe not pastels because pastels are not my personal palette but I know there would be a few people who would appreciate pastels as well and moving into summer I would be thinking more of brighter colors and brighter pa and, and and more vibrant patterns so for spring I'm I'm just thinking low-key um, flowy breezy garments uh, something knit on a loose gauge um, maybe something even holy when i mean holy i mean lace knitting um so i'm just thinking of those kind of things when i'm talk talking about spring so i've looked at those features and picked a few patterns i have divided them into different categories so i've got the cardigans uh we've also got the pullovers in the tops we've got shawls or and wraps and the last one is accessories and in the accessories we've got some headbands we've got some um, mittens and some sock so I hope you enjoyed this the first the first category we're going to be talking about is cardigans and I want to start off with the Corin cardigan anyone who has been knitting would know about this by now it's a Corin cardigan by Rebecca Klo this is an all over lace pattern and if I was ever to do lace knitting in an all over lace garment this is a pattern that I would go for even though it would mean knitting flat and maybe not in the round and that would mean uh, it being a little more complicated for me this is still something I would pick because I own the pattern I've read the pattern it is easy to follow and this is something I feel could be doable for me um, this is knit in worsted weight yarn the needles used are five millimeter needles and uh, four millimeter needles for the ribbing um, it is knit bottom up so again most beginner knitters usually look at garments that are knit top down because it seems more easy uh, to keep track of more easy to knit and more easy to handle maneuver so this is something again that is a little outside a beginner's comfort zone but a good place to start at um, so it's knit bottom up it has dropped shoulders there are different customizations you can do with this cardigan you can have a round neck you can have a v-neck uh, there are versions with uh, short sleeves and long sleeves and of course the length of the cardigan is customizable that's up to you and so with all of these options available i think this is a good pattern to start off with it comes in 10 different sizes it starts from 34 inches and goes up to 64 inches and the recommended ease is about 2 to 8 centimeters or about 0.75 to 3.5 inches. Um, I may uh, go up on the ease a little personally for me because I would probably be wearing something inside and I would need enough um, either I would go lower on the arm depth or go uh, on the higher ease side just to make sure this is able to wrap me and probably a dress or a top that I'm wearing underneath together um, also because this is a lacy all over lace cardigan I would also want to be very very aware of being modest at least for me so uh, what I'm wearing inside needs to be comfortably fit into the cardigan so I would look at going up on the ease um, this for me in Canadian dollars would cost around twelve point six one dollars next pattern I would want to talk about is called the garden cardigan It's by Ankistrick I am sure I'm not saying that right I'll put her name up here I'm really really sorry about mispronouncing names and even and and, and at sometimes even words um, so this is a DK weight cardigan and it uses needle sizes four millimeters and 3.5 millimeters it goes from size one to six I'll tell you what that looks like in inches so it, it starts from 28.25 and it goes up to 61 inches the garment is intended to be worn with about 
10 inches of positive ease. So if you look at each of these sizes, they are not given in one particular size. There is a range of sizes. So I would say even though it says there are six sizes, but because of the range, you could say it's up to 12 different 12 size sizes based on the ranges that is that is given. Um, and um, this particular cardigan actually uses cashmere yarn, but I would pro I would personally look at using um, uh, maybe alpaca linen blend um, or a wool linen blend or wool cotton blend just to make sure it is okay for spring. Um, the pattern costs about ten point six one dollars and. Um, it is worked seamlessly top down. So you start with the back panel, you knit up to the underarms, you pick uh, stitches in the front and then um, join in the underarms and then knit flat. What I really like about this cardigan is the button band. So the button band does not go all around the neck like normal cardigans would. It starts at the back of the neck, you finish one band and then you pick up sleeves overlapping the first band and then you knit on the other side. It's a double knit cardigan. The finish is beautiful. There are no buttons on it, which for me is a win again. Um, and um, it looks breezy, light, and this is a perfect cardigan to just throw on your shoulders, leave it open and enjoy this spring weather. Um, I like the name of the cardigan. I like that it's called the garden cardigan. I like the lace motifs. It's flowery. I like the color that she's knitting. It's green and um, it is it's just my kind of a cardigan to knit. The next one is the Condado cardigan. It's by Alison Green. This was published in Barocco magazine and uh, it uses Barocco yarn, of course. It's a DK weight cardigan and the needle size that is suggested is four millimeters. There is, this is a mixture of crochet and knitting. So the crochet hook suggested is also four millimeters. This cardigan has a very, very interesting construction. The back panel, the entire back panel is uh, crocheted and then the stitches are knit from the edges of the panel and the, the front panels of the cardigan are knit sideways instead of straight. So it's a very different construction and just for that I would say this is a little more interesting to me. For me personally I would think doing lace and crochet is a lot more approachable, a lot more doable than actually doing lace and knitting. Um, like the knit twos together slip slip knit are things that are very very confusing for me so uh, this seems a little more doable for me and um, also like the idea that you could put two different crafts together and make something so beautiful uh, this pattern comes in about 10 different sizes it starts from 34 and a half inches and goes up to 70 inches uh, this is the bust measurement and um, this does have an introductory discount of 50% off for the until the end of this month, until the end of March. If you are interested in this pattern, I would suggest you go buy it. Uh, for me, in Canadian dollars, it would cost about $11.25. The next cardigan I wanted to talk about is the Primavera cardigan by Isabella Clark. She is also the host of the 100 Acre Wool Knitting Podcast. Now it was her podcast that actually inspired me to even start knitting and just find courage to start knitting because if you look at the initial podcast, initial episodes of her podcast, she was doing such complex designs that I felt I have to start now to get to the point where she is. Uh, if you like something very complex in knitting, I would suggest you go watch her. This cardigan in particular is very soft. It looks very elegant. It also has a slight vintage vibe which is beautiful it's got scalloped edges and i think the scalloped edges are actually crocheted it's got cables and this would be something uh, if you were interested in looking at something more challenging to work on this spring um, this would be something you could look at um, this is knit in worsted weight yarn and it uses four millimeters and uh, 3.75 millimeter needles um, the crochet 
hook that she has used. I think, again, this is for this calyps, um, the button band that is about five millimeters. Now, cardigan is available in about nine different sizes. It goes, it starts from 34 inches and goes up to 66 inches, which is a good range of sizes. Um, I personally think. Now, now she has used Nuded and Yarn, but for spring, when I'm looking at something spring appropriate, I would probably think of using cotton yarn or cotton merino uh, blends and um, um, make it more spring appropriate and more usable for spring. The last cardigan I have is the Thea Cardigan by Martin Story. This is made using fingering weight yarn. Now this is something I think I would cast on sooner than all the other cardigans that I spoke about. Um, it's made using 3 millimeter needles and 2.75 millimeter needles. So this is going to be a longer knit, but the finished cardigan is beautiful. It's got a sash that you can tie around your waist. And um, I would think I could throw this on just a pair of flowy pants or dresses and I would be very, very happy wearing this. This cardigan comes in about nine different sizes. It starts from 28 inches and goes up to 62 inches. Um, this again, uh, when it comes to the sizes, it has the range. For example, when you look at the smallest size, it says 28 to 30 inches. Um, and so you might wanna grade swatch, read through the pattern really well uh, to see how she has decided on what size uh, she has in it for herself. Um, the pattern cost about 9.84 Canadian dollars. That was five cardigans for spring. We will now look at the tops and sweaters. The first off I want to talk about is the Spring League Sleeveless Hoodie by Alexandra Tavel. Um, she's also known as Two of Ones on Ravelry and she also has her own uh, website. I usually get the, I used to get most of her patterns off her website. Um, this pattern in particular I really like for once, the unfinished edges of this sleeve, that's what actually drew me to this pattern. I also like that it has a workable hoodie, you can pull it up, it's got I-card strings, and it's really nice to look at. Um, this is made using worsted weight yarn. She actually used this line brand color theory, I guess that's an acrylic yarn, and uh, the needle sizes recommended are 4.5 millimeters and 4 millimeters. This is actually, it says top down, but I think it is bottom up. Based on her blog, it's actually bottom up and then it's seamed on the top using Kitchener Stitch uh, together. Um, it's called Kitchener Stitch Grafting, if I'm not wrong. That's what she uses to actually put together uh, the top uh, at the shoulder. And the detail even on the top is very, very beautiful where she joins it. Um, there is a signature there was a series of designs that she had i think it's I, I think it's the league series if i'm not wrong it has the slip stitches on right on top which um I'll, I'll put it up over here the slip stitches are actually the attraction of this pattern i can imagine throwing this on on a full sleeve thin t-shirt and um um, going for a walk in the spring um, and this is a pattern that I have been itching to cast on for a long time and if time permits I would probably do that this year. It go, uh, the sizes available are from an extra small to 4XL and when you look at the bust circumference it actually says 40.5 inches to 68.25 inches. So it is actually worn with the positive ease of about 10 to 12 inches so so that I think is incorporated into the design when you look at the starting size being 40.5 I would think it is actually incorporated into the design. The cost of this pattern would be about 10.55 Canadian dollars. The next pattern is Alice Top. I this again i feel i've heard a lot about but then uh, the kind of podcast we watch or instagram posts we all get is very different person to person so i'm not going to assume everyone knows about this um i really like this as a layering piece or even as a standalone it's going to be really beautiful the actual uh, piece that's shown on Ravelry is somebody wearing it short sleeves but if I if I increase the sleeve length to maybe elbow length or bracelet length I can even look at this being an elegant top that you can wear on top of skirts. Um, 
it's got ruffles in the back it's a pretty it's it is longer than a regular top but it is made of light fingering weight yarn which is something I really like oh and if I didn't mention the name of the designer it's Hiroko Fukatsu I will again put her name here um, and uh, it's made using light fingering weight yarn using 3.5 millimeter needles the fabric looks beautiful and even just looking at it I can feel it being light and flowy and breezy and something that's really enjoyable. The size range for this is really small. There's only about five different sizes that's mentioned. It starts from 31 inches and goes up to 47 0.75 inches um, so if I'm going to be knitting this for myself I could probably knit in one of the two larger sizes and I would be okay but if I'm knitting this for somebody else I want to look at gift knitting I find the sizes very constrictive and so uh, this might not be my first choice of top to go um, uh, to go looking for if I'm gift knitting in particular this top would cost me around 5.62 Canadian dollars the next top I was looking at was Sook Moon Sweater. This again, I've heard a lot of different people talk. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be knitting this this year. Um, this comes in five different sizes. It is by Ego Knits. Ego Knits? This is by Ego Knits. Uh, it comes in five different sizes. The yarn she uses is from Gepard Garn and it is a light fingering weight yarn. Um, but it is a very, very airy fabric. She uses about 4.5 millimeter needles and uh, I'm assuming for the ribbing 3.5 millimeter needles. The sizes that this comes in again is only five sizes. Um, she, it starts from 40 inches and goes up to 50 inches. So this is designed to have a possible ease of anywhere from 4 to 12 inches. I wish there were more uh, size ranges but this would not be my go-to knit um, if I was going to knit. This is available for 50 kroners. Um, I am not av I'm not able to see it in Canadian dollars which means it's not available on Ravelry if you have to purchase this pattern you will have to go to Egonet's website and purchase it from there the next pattern is a favorite of mine well so this is actually a Spanish pattern uh, and it's been recently translated into English it's this pattern is by Sofia Isagira and um, it just has sizes small, medium and large. It is about 86.5 centimeters and goes up to 96.5 centimeters but it is designed to have a positive ease of anywhere from 26 to 28 centimeters. Now from Ravelry from the um, feedback or the comments or the project notes that people have left um, I do see that even if you are knitting a smaller size there is a lot of positive ease and people have actually wanted to size down if they can but there are only three sizes available so we'll have to do the math for ourselves personally for me I would take this as a challenge uh, for me to work on um, understanding the pattern and then doing the math for myself seeing how I can work on it um, I am planning to knit this using tin Saniskan tin line and um, I'll let you know how it goes. This pattern is knit using light fingering weight yarn and it uses 3.75 millimeter needles. I really like the color choices and the stripes and that's what actually caught my eye. I also like the neck that it is a wide neck so if I'm wearing a tank underneath this could be an easy um, easy top to just throw over in summer and spring and that is one of the reasons that I actually like this pattern a lot. I am going to knit it in cream and yellow because like I said the colors was what attracted me to it and um, it's a simple top down crew neck raglan uh, top. The cost for this would be 6.15 Canadian dollars. Violet by Jessica McDonald is the next pattern. I really like Jessica McDonald's patterns. I like her podcast. I like um, how she, I like a thought process behind putting patterns together and her yarn choices as well. So if you have a chance to watch her podcast, I would suggest strongly suggest that you watch her podcast. Um, this part, this this particular pattern called Violet, it is made using fingering weight yarn. Um, she actually uses bare naked wool. Um, sport 
is what she has used but it uh, the needle sizes used for it are 3.75 millimeters and 3.25 millimeter needles. This particular pattern comes in about 10 different sizes. It starts from 36.25 inches and goes up to 72.25 inches. Now this is a pattern I would very comfortably recommend, very comfortably look at if I'm going to use this as a gift knitting pattern for anybody else. Um, the, the, the garment itself is recommended to be worn with about four to ten inches of positive ease i like that again this is the drop shoulder but the the shoulders are not really low it is at a perfect spot and um um the the neckline the bottom is beautiful it has some lace detailing at the bottom and that was something that actually attracted me to this i can imagine making this crop throwing it over a skirt a long skirt or throwing it over a dress and it's going to fit very comfortably um Again, for my personal choice, I would probably increase the sleeve length to at least elbow length, but that is just my personal taste, but I really like how this looks on her. This for me would cost about 11.95 Canadian dollars. Slightly Sassy V by Amy Cher is something that I have come so close to casting on so many different times. Um, it's a very simple v-neck top. It is actually raglan top down in the round. You can make it cropped and um, I really like how she styled it as well. Uh, she's wearing a lavender one with orange linen pants and I really like that look. That was again something that caught my attention and made me look at this pattern for the first time. Um, this is made using Pearl Soho Linen Quill, which is again a yarn I have in stash, but I've been looking for the perfect pattern and I can, I, I can hear the screaming out to me. Uh, so when I have time next, I think I would be casting this on. It comes in about nine different sizes. This pattern in particular starts from 30 inches and goes up to 62 inches and it is designed to have a positive ease of about two to five inches and it looks very comfortable. This again I would definitely increase the sleeve length. She has two options available in her pattern. Uh, there is a short sleeve option and a long sleeve one. The long sleeve one is not too long. There is one that's just below the elbows and that's something I'm looking at especially again if I'm looking at it as a layering piece to wear over dresses or tank tops or a skirt and um what I really like about this pattern in particular is when you look at the pattern pictures, I can see it being worn uh, by people of different shapes, different sizes, and it gives me more confidence to knit this for myself. And I know that sometimes patterns look good on a slender body and I would think, oh, that's what I would look like. And when I knit, that may not be how I look. And it could be disappointing, but seeing it on different bodies gives me more confidence to knit this and um, I really really like how she's designed this. I also like that when you look at the pattern she has a table that gives all the measurements out so when you're looking at the pattern you know that oh this is the exact size I want to knit even before buying the pattern and I think that is really really helpful when you're looking at a pattern on Ravelry. This would cost me about 14.76 Canadian dollars and honestly for all the details that she's already provided I would be able to make a very informed choice on buying on purchasing this pattern and I would be happy to pay $14 uh, dollars or more for this pattern. The Spring Fling Top by The Petite Knitter is an other top that I have been looking at for a long time and I actually knitted. It was a part of my spring knitting plan but I couldn't wait because this was color work. I was excited about starting color work and I started it, I finished it. It's ready to wear but I have to say that it is a warmer garment. If I'm wearing this, this would be really good for the early morning or um, if you're indoors with the air conditioning on or for late evenings, but it is not okay if the sun is out. If it is a gloomy cloudy day and the temperature is anywhere from uh, let's say 1 to 15 degrees Celsius, it's it's tolerable but once the sun comes out you would not want to wear this especially with the yarn choice that I made. Um, 
she has knitted this with Cardiff Cashmere Classic. It is this port weight yarn and um, the needle size, the recommended needle size is about 3.5 millimeters. Um, the pattern is available in 10 different sizes. It starts from 29.25 inches and goes up to 64.25 inches. And um, you have different options to make. You can either make it short sleeved or long sleeved, cropped or full length. And the instructions for this is very, very neatly charted. I really like the way she writes it. It's very straightforward. It has no, um, there's no much speaking about the pattern. The pattern's just there, you get started. And um, this also I feel is a very good pattern for beginner knitters. Now with the sport weight yarn, if you are looking at, let's say, Knit Picks Bamboo yarn uh it's called galileo i think it's about 50 percent merino wool and 50 percent uh bamboo and that would be uh i think if i did it if i knit this again that would be a yarn i would probably go for yes it's going to stretch but with color work having the double layer the bamboo is going to give a little more airiness it's going to be a little cool against the skin and it's really good as a layering piece. It could uh, help with regulating my skin temperature and that is something I would pick instead of um, the yarns that I actually picked. So if you're wearing this in spring, you would have to be very conscious about the yarn choices because it's color work. You would have two layers of yarn on your, on your upper body and the rest would be okay but it's still a warmer wear. The last one I have is called the Arigato Tea and this is by Claudia Quintanilla Units Toronto. Um, when this tea came out, the first thing that caught my eye was the color of the tea and the skirt that she's wearing. It really went well together and it has not gone past my radar. I uh, Every time I'm looking at uh, spring knitting, this is something that keeps coming up. When it was first released, it was in winter. I don't know if it was December or January, but it was peak winter. And so this was released as a layering piece. But when I saw it, I, I, I just had to make it for spring. And so this is something I might probably want to make in uh, fingering weight merino yarn. Um, and it looks like a very elegant piece, especially because of the way she styled it. It is, uh, it's not a crew neck, it's not a boat neck, but it has, it has a nice looseness around the neck. This is knit using light fingering weight yarn, um, using 3.25 millimeter needles and 3.5 millimeter needles. The size range starts from XS and goes up to 4XL. So that's about eight sizes. The finished body measurements is, starts from 34 inches and it goes up to 64 inches. Um, this is a drop shoulder pattern. So that is something you might wanna keep in mind when you start. Um, this for me would cost around 12.65 Canadian dollars. These next set of designs are wraps. When I mean wrap, it's shawls. Um, and this one wrap cardigan. Uh, this is again something that it's a little strange for me because I've not done lace, but these have intrigued me. So I've just picked a few patterns that caught my attention and something that I would probably make for my mom in particular. The first one is Collie Wobble Shawl. It's by Denise Bartels. And it is made using light fingering weight yarn and uh, using 3.25 millimeter needles. This is a free Ravelry download. Um, she actually says that this pattern is not test knit, so there is a possibility of it having mistakes in it. But when you look at the pattern, I, there are actually two lace patterns. There's one she uses for the border, one she uses for the body. I think even if I take the one that she's used for the border and use it for the entire shawl, I would be happy with it. So if at all there is a mistake you could look at which one is okay and skip the one that has the mistake and just replace the entire shawl with one motif um i think me in particular when i look at this pattern i would have preferred it to have one motif compared to two motifs and uh the one motif would have been more than enough um 
it is it looks like such a delicate nice wrap and for some reason I prefer rectangular or semicircular like the crescent wraps to a uh, triangular wrap. I feel triangular wraps are very difficult to style unless you were wrapping it around your neck but if it's a crescent wrap and you want to drape it around your shoulder it looks pretty in the back and the front. Same thing with a rectangular wrap. So this wrap is something I uh, really liked. Um, you can of course for all the wraps especially when it is a repeat pattern you can adjust the length and the breadth by just adjusting the repeat of the pattern. So once you look at the chart, you understand how it's written, you can always modify that to suit what you would like to see in your project. Um, the next one is the eye blink shawl. I'm smiling because <laughs> I've actually cast this on. This would be my first lace project. Um, Actually, that's not true. I did try my hand at lace and then frock the entire thing. So this I'm hoping would go better than my last lace project. It is the Eye Blink Shawl by Heidi Lander. Um, it's made using fingering weight yarn. The gauge is very loose, so you use 4.5 millimeter needles for this. I honestly did not do a gauge swatch because it was a shawl and I wasn't really bothered. But if you're a good knitter, do your gauge swatch. Um, this pattern is again free and I was thinking I've been forgetting to say something but these are wraps and they do not have sizes so it's okay. Um, this uses about 130 grams so the first thing that came to my mind was let's say I have a sock yarn. Um, like a sock bundle so you get the whole skin the 100 gram skin and you get a small 20 gram skin for the cuffs and the heel and the toe uh, just to add that contrast if I have a yarn like that and I don't know what to do I might use the main yarn for the entire shawl and use the contrast just for the borders to make it pop the number of projects on Ravelry are quite a few there are 1,354 projects uh, on Ravelry so it's it's a pretty nice shawl and um, with what I've been working on it so far the repeats are really easy um, I haven't gotten to the lace pattern yet but the shawl itself are very is very mindless and um, once I get to the lace pattern I may have a lot more to talk about the era ara shawl by Andrea Mari is um, the next one on my list it is such a pretty shawl this again it has more of the crescent shape instead of the triangular one which is why I really liked it it has eyelids it has lace it has garter stitch and it is made using simple yarn overs and decreases and that is something that drew me to this pattern um, it's made using light fingering weight yarn but this is a little more denser gauge than the eye blink shawl this is made using 3.75 millimeter needles which feels more appropriate for fingering weight yarn. Um, what I also have learned recently is that when you use yarn and you don't use the correct needles it could cause spilling and it could cause the project to come apart a lot sooner than it's meant to. So if you are using let's say super wash yarn but you are knitting it at a looser gauge there are higher chances of it pilling compared to um, a more rustic yarn and using it at the correct gauge, a little tighter gauge. The tighter the gauge, the more uh, long lasting the, pro the product is. So if I'm going to knit something like a shawl and I want to knit it on a very very loose gauge, I think picking silk yarns, cotton yarn or linen yarn would be more appropriate and if I'm knitting it at the correct gauge, I may go for the actual wool. That would cost about 11.25 Canadian dollars. Um, Shawl of Solitaire by Marie Lise Herf. Um, I know I've not said that right, I'll put her name here. Uh, this is again a very pretty lace pattern. It has large diamonds surrounded by smaller diamond motifs and um, I really like how it looks. It's, 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 it's again a free pattern on Ravelry and uh, it has fewer projects. It has only about 149 projects and when I was looking at the comments I didn't really see any complaints so it's not like there were lesser projects for lack of clarity but um, this seems simple. It's got a ribbing edge, it's got a very nice airy texture. This is something that I would imagine wearing to a gala and then taking off in sparkly yarn and then taking it off just before entering somewhere fancy. Um, 
And the last one I have in this category is Twister. This is by Terry Fadden. Um, this is made on, uh, this is made using worsted weight yarn and uh, using 3.75 millimeter needles. This I could see wearing over a tank top or a dress or just sitting on a beach in the evening watching sunset. That's the kind of, this is the kind of thing that I would probably like. So it's like a shawl, but it's got sleeves, so I like that about it. Um, I like how the front is twisted, <laughs> which is why it's called a twister, but um, it adds, a flare of elegance and it really really looks nice. Um, this would cost about 8.42 Canadian dollars and the yarn yardage is also a tad uh, on the higher side considering this to be worsted weight yarn and so you might want to look at all of it before picking this pattern to make. The last category I have is accessories. We'll breeze through this. I won't keep you any longer. So the first one, the first set of accessories I have is the headband. Uh, the first one is Jasmine. It is by Christine Griffin Grimes. Um, this is made using worsted weight yarn on 4.5 millimeter needles and uh, the finished size is about 22 inches the circumference and it looks beautiful it i i i have some leftover yarn pearl soho yarn um the hedgerow yarn i have some of it left it's yellow with speckles and i think i'm gonna make this in that uh, using that and um I do not see the cost on Ravelry, which would mean I would have to go to a different website to purchase it. The headband that I've been looking at is the Midsummer Headband by Morella Moments. Um, and this is a very, very simple cable and lace pattern. This I don't mind doing because it's just one um, band. It's gonna be really quick. It's gonna be an evenings project probably and it's gonna go really fast. It's made using sport weight yarn. I have some Galileo yarn and this is what I am um, probably going to use it for. The pattern is free. Um, I like that it is tied instead of it being elastic and so you have more control over how tight or loose you want this tied over your head. Um, Ramosa Headband by Marina Skua is the next one. Um, this is, it can be made using any gauge and the needle size recommended is 3 millimeters and 3.75 millimeter needles. It costs about 3.6 Canadian dollars. Um, this again is a very very nice simple headband. I would think it has a lace motif and the end of it is just uh, knit. I would think at least the knit part uh, to add some elastic in it like knit it with elastic so it adds some um, integrity to the band uh, because this is a slip on it does not have a tie and so you'll just have to slip on and expect it to do the work to hold your hair in place so definitely adding elastic to it the knit, knitting elastic is going to be useful um i also think when i'm looking at the needle size dk weight would be good. I would think fingering would be too loose. So either DK or worsted weight is what I would pick to make this headband to make sure it's sturdy and it actually gets the job done. Um, the next group is mittens. Now when I'm looking at spring mittens is just to keep your hands warm and so um, when I'm saying warm, not really toasty because you'd still want to enjoy the spring and not feel extremely hot. The temperature is also not so cold where our fingertips are going to be freezing. And so the kind of mittens that I've actually looked at, all of them are fingerless mittens and they, ha they are holy. They have lace or some sort of texture worked into them. The first one is Teen by Liz Cork. And uh, this is made using fingering weight yarn uh, and 2.5 millimeter needle. So that's almost like knitting sock. Um, and this pattern is actually available on a separate website and um, the website is listed on Ravelry for you to go on. This mitten in particular is, has a surprisingly large range of sizes. It starts from extra small and goes on up to extra large so that is pretty impressive. Um, the next mitten I was looking at is the fingerless gloves called Leaves. It is by Valentina Fedzova Georgieva. And 
And uh, this is made using iron weight yarn and using 4 millimeter or 5 millimeter needles. So I would say this is a little on the warmer side. This would be good for cool evening walks or, or if you're taking your dog out early morning for a walk, this is a good uh, pattern to have. Um, it's just made, uh, you, there's only one size, but the lace motif for this seems very simple. It seems more, um, memorizable like you would know what is going to come next and so it's going to be simpler to knit this this would cost me about 5.62 canadian dollars the next mitten i have is the riptide mitts by jennifer shields toland um, this is made using dk weight yarn and the needle size is used is from 3.25 to 3.75 so it uses 3.25 3.5 and 3.75 the pattern actually comes also with a cowl and so you do get a discount if you're getting the cowl and the mitt together but just the mitt by itself costs about 8.44 canadian dollars it comes in three sizes it comes in small medium large and again i like that it has a mixture of just stock in it and then um, lace it's not all over lace it's a perfect mix of both the next pattern is cloudburst by arian gray she's used fingering weight yarn and she's used three millimeter needles She's just used one size in this pattern and this is a free pattern on Ravelry available for you to download and use right away. Um, the next group of patterns, I moved on to sock. Um, honestly, for summer, I don't think I would ever be inspired to knit sock, but spring, I might still venture um, sock knitting, venture into sock knitting. Uh, so this pattern is called Fork in the Road. It's by Lisa K. Ross and um, it's made using fingering weight yarn and 2.25 millimeter needles it comes in three different sizes small medium and large and together so that's three different sizes um, this would cost about 8.44 canadian dollars um, this i like i like the lace pattern it has it it's really lacy it's not like some of the patterns where you would find solid blocks in between the lace but this entire sock is just lace so if this is something that you seem interested in um, dive in <laughs> the next sock pattern I have is the Nuala socks by Fox and Folk now uh, this is again made in fingering weight yarn and it uses US 1 and US 2 so that's 2.25 and 2.75 millimeter needles. It comes in three sizes which is small, medium, large. All of them are adult sizes and this would cost about 8.08 .08 Canadian dollars. Um, this is a top down sock and the lace motifs i like this a little more than the previous one because it's broken down you would have uh, lace you have cables you have some um simple stock in its stitches i really like how it's mixed up and um i i i can see that this could be a very very engaging knit um the next one is the Floor Sock by Dohi Locatelli and this is made using light fingering weight yarn, 2.25 millimeter needles and it is available for me for 7.03 Canadian dollars. This comes in about three different sizes, so it is small, medium, large. It is all women's sizes and you can for sure make it using one skein of yarn. This pattern was actually released as a fundraiser. I do not know if the fundraiser is still on because the fundraiser, this was released as a fundraiser pattern in December 2019. Um, and uh, it has quite a few projects. It has about, it has close to 600 projects. So if this is something you're interested in, please look at it. Um, then there is the Midsummer Dancer Sock. I like the ruffles on top. Like I said, spring for me is a more, uh, the most romantic season. And so when I'm looking at the ruffles on top, it gives a little, um, it gives that hint of flair. It gives that hint of starting to go out like a different season of actually being involved with people is starting. So I really, really like the Midsummer Dancer sock for that. This is by Sari Nordlin and would cost me around 7.54 Canadian dollars. This comes in two different sizes and um, it is to be worn with negative ease.
The next pattern is the In Bloom Socks set. I like the name of the pattern. It says In Bloom, which means it's just creaming spring for me. Uh, this is by Summer Lee. And this is a set of three different sock patterns. Now the cuff part of the sock is what usually has the lace and the rest of the sock is simple stock in it. Two of the socks is, <laughs> two of the sock sets have lace running down the front but one is simple stock in it. So this again seems a very doable pattern. I like the colors that she's picked. She's picked orange and cream and mustard yellow with pops of pink. I really really like her choice of colors. You get this in four different sizes. There's small, medium, large and extra large and this would cost me around 9.84 Canadian dollars. For a set of three sock I would think that is justifiable and also you you can always mix and match the patterns and um, especially with summer lead designs when she she also has a podcast where she talks about her designs and so you would get an insight into how you can modify the sock and for someone again like me a beginner knitter anyone talking about modifications is something I would really want to hear about immediately and so um, this is a pattern that I could try and get the most out of the next one is Featherwain Socks by Helen Stewart. Featherwain Sock, I really like how it's textured. When you actually look at it, it does not look like lace first. It looks just like textures. And then when you look closely, you can see that there are yarn overs and eyelets that are very strategically placed for it to look like a feather. And um, again, just the idea of feathers, of birds returning, of, of life coming back in spring makes me want to knit this sock. <laughs> For me, if you have figured by now, it's more the ideology and the name of, this, um, name of the patterns that actually draws me to it. And then I would probably look at the, tech, the technical parts of the pattern. This comes in three sizes. It comes in seven, eight, and nine inches. It would cost me about 10.81 Canadian dollars. The last sock I would like to talk about is called the Petal Drop Sock by Florence Miller. Now Florence Miller also has a knitting podcast and um, I like her ideology between, behind designing and pricing designs. This design in particular, she has um, a buy what you pay what you can. Um, so if you have, if you use a particular coupon code, you get it for 50% off. You have another coupon code to get it 100% off, and. Um, this is this looks like a very simple beginner friendly pattern and the way she writes her patterns again as a beginner knitter I have already always always appreciated it and I'm sure this sock is gonna be that way as well it comes in two different sizes it's um, designed using fingering weight yarn and uh, the needle size it's 2.25 millimeter needles so those are the spring patterns. I may probably make a video to, to, to talk about what are the patterns I would be knitting this spring and what are the patterns I've already knit for this spring because I was impatient and I wanted to start wearing it during spring. So I knit a couple of patterns um, last month. I started last month and, and I'm close to finishing them. One I've already finished. I'd probably put out a video later uh, this month to talk about my spring knitting plans, uh, what they mean to me in particular, what are the yarns I'm going to use, what are the colors I'm using, and um, if this is something you enjoyed, if you want to know what I'll be doing for my spring knitting plans, um, stay tuned and I would be happy to take you along with me to show what my plans and what the process is going to be like. Um, if this is something you enjoyed, uh, please feel free to leave a comment below. You can uh, mention what was the pattern that you enjoyed the most. What's the pattern that you can't wait to cast on? If there is a different pattern that you have been looking at and you have been inspired by, feel free to put it down and share it with everybody else. And if you enjoy this video and you want to watch videos that are similar to this, feel free to subscribe and you will be notified when there's a new video that's up. Thank you and I hope you have a good day. Mm -hmm.